Welcome back into the early line. It's hour number two on Sports Grid. I'm Kevin Walsh joined by Donnie Wrightside. We jump right into it. Baseball preview time. Padres, Nationals. Juan Soto's return to the nation's capital pretty quickly here. A big time favorite status on the pods as you would anticipate. Minus 245 in the FanDuel Sportsbook. Total here is a nine. Soto back in Washington. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You actually just brought that. I didn't even think of that. Like, San Diego at Washington, the last thing I was going to think about was it's the return of Juan Soto. Seriously? Does he get cheers? Is it Soto? I swear, I didn't look at that because you know why, Kevin? I'm not all about the, like, side stuff here. I mean, there's people out here that say, you know what? Get a new job. How much vacation I get. That's not me here. Like, I look at the things that are important here and what makes sense and do the best show possible. And that means the Padres lineup today, Kevin. Did you know over the past 30 days, they've been slicing and dicing right-handed pitchers? And we have Abbott on the mound today. Do you know what his XFIP is? A four? Nah. Five? Uh Uh-uh. Six? Nope. Seven? Almost eight here. That's what I have my eyes focused on today. K percentage for him last 30 days, 17%. Terrible. Walk percentage, 15%. Absolutely terrible. How about his splits, Kevin, against left-handed batters over the past 30 days being a right-handed pitcher? 450 weighted on base percentage. How about the righties? 339. ISO power? How about this? The lefties, a 448, and to righties, a 235. You're looking at Juan Soto in the middle of that lineup here tonight, Kevin, as a lefty batter. You're telling me we're not going all in on Juan Soto props tonight where he has an ISO power number of 341 versus right-handed pitching and a weighted on base percentage of 467. Fireworks tonight in D.C. Nine full at-bats from the San Diego Padres. They're getting it after tonight. They'll probably get the total themselves in this game from a team total perspective. That's the way I'm going. That's the way I'm focused on this game. Number checks in at five and a half minus 108. Love it. Towards the over. There's going to be a lot of juice behind a Juan Soto. But here's the deal. FanDuel Sportsbook's ready for it. How about a minus 155 Mm -hmm. number on two plus bags for Juan Soto? Not letting you get in cheap here at all. To record a run, Juan Soto, minus 290. To record an RBI, Juan Soto is minus 115. We don't even have the home run market listed, but he might just be plus 100 in that as well. So if you're looking for the narrative prop, maybe you just roll out that team total on the Padres there as Donnie's breaking it down. Guardians Blue Jays, we talk about a division leader and Toronto. Guardians, five straight wins. Playing good baseball here. Chug it along. They are a dog up north. Barrios has the ball against Quantrill. Totals in nine. How do you match these two teams up? I think I was leaning on a total in this game, but we take a look at Barrios over the past 30 days, Kevin, a 4.41 XFIP number. He's really struggled with left-handed batters, and you're going to get at least five of those in the lineup tonight between true lefties and also switch hitters from a Cleveland Guardians perspective. So if we flip it over to Toronto, we know what they can bring to the table. Heavy right-handed bats. And why is that important? Quantrill's got a 4.63 XFIP over the past month, which isn't all that good. But if you take a look at his lefty-righty splits, how about this, Kevin? If you did have a heavy left-handed lineup tonight against Quantrill, he's got a 263 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number against those lefties at an 089. But if you flip it over to the other side, a 350 weighted on base percentage to righties and a 200 ISO power number. And why is that important? The only lefty doing the lineup tonight that we anticipate is Tapia out of the seven hole. Everybody else from the right side. I think we do get some runs, even though sort of a playoff atmosphere, if you can get one here in the month of August, which I do think it will be. But I think we get runs. The nine seems like an appropriate price that I think they can go over. I'm interested to see, you kind of mentioned the atmosphere there. Uh, Cal Quantrill's probably the third starter for the Guardians. And Barrios is, is a guy that they made a big move to bring in, you would think would be the third starter for the Toronto Blue Jays. Just to see how this matches up here, right? Who who has that advantage? Because Barrios does not have the numbers of a quality third starter that you would, you know, put heavy consideration into for a contending team like the Toronto Blue Jays are supposed to be. It's a really fun matchup to follow. I do know our radio audience is here. They've been here for a little bit. I don't think you welcomed them in. You were uh, too busy giving them the winning edge, so that's no problem. But we're breaking down some Rock baseball games here right off the bat to start our number two. And I. Do you have enough time for Mets Phillies or it, would that be rushed? Do you want to do Rays Orioles instead? 
No, I mean, Mets Phillies is an easy one tonight because the only way I'd be looking is towards the under. Ranger Suarez has been wonderful, Kevin, over the past 30 days. How about the lefty batters? An 065 weighted on base percentage to righties, a 282. And then if we flip it over, how do the Phillies line up? I don't know. Against Max Scherzer, nobody lines up good against <laughs> Max Scherzer. And how about this yesterday, Kevin? Leaving the game early late was Kyle Schwarber with a calf tweak. There's a really good nice. chance that Kyle Schwarber, your best hitter, might not even be in the lineup tonight. So if that's a seven, I'm looking towards the under. Playoff atmosphere, as we just talked about with the Guardians and the Blue Jays, I'm getting that same vibe from this Phillies-Mets game. I got to tell you, the interesting thing is both these teams have been playing very good baseball, and they've been absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. The fact that we're seeing a seven here speaks volumes to uh, yeah. Juan Suarez picking it up, but also who you know Max Scherzer is. Scherzer is someone that you also, you know, mentioned. Keep your eye on in the Cy Young race. Sandy Alcantara's last outing was not completely dominant. Still solid overall. But Scherzer's ERA now dips below a two, which feels like a necessity to be considered. He's still 40 to one. I wonder what that number it's looks like if we get another yeah. big-time gem from Max Scherzer here. Seven-plus innings double-digit Ks against the Phils. I wonder if that number gets on the move. A lot more baseball for us to preview here. It's a loaded hour number two and a lot of preseason action as well. Come right back. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now Attention, do you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS? If so, you may qualify for the IRS Fresh Start Program, so you won't have to make any payments to the IRS. That's right, if you qualify for the IRS's Fresh Start Program, you won't make any IRS payments once you are accepted. Once you are in the IRS Fresh Start Program, they must stop all harassing and threatening collection activities. Call Tax Relief today now at 800-382-1870 to see if you qualify. Again, 800-382-1870. I lost my motivation. I was feeling old and starting to look it. And then, voila, I feel better than I did in my 20s. If you feel stuck, if you can't find the drive, it may be due to low HGH, which naturally drops with age. Your growth hormone levels start declining in your 20s, but GF9's lab-tested, patented formula is designed to boost GH levels naturally by up to 682%. Growth hormone is associated with reduced body fat, increased lean muscle, improved energy, mood, and more. And best of all, GF9 has been shown to work in as little as two hours. I've taken a million different supplements. This is the first first one that I've noticed has made a tremendous difference. To me, GF9 is the best supplement out on the market. GF9 is a top-selling male performance product at GNC. Call right now to try GF9 for 60 days absolutely risk-free. Call 1-800-795-9129 or go to getgf9.com. Join us, get your drive back, get your youth back, and get back in the game with GF9. You heard a screech outside at night, but you can't see what it is because there's not enough light. You need the Bionic Floodlight from Bell & Howell. The solar-powered, motion-activated, multi-directional floodlight. The versatile, wireless, safety, security, and outdoor lifestyle light you'll love. And right now, it's yours for just $29.99. And the shipping is free. Order now, and we'll send a second Bionic Floodlight. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-604-7066 or order online at bionicfloodlight.com. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Asbestos manufacturers sold deadly asbestos materials to thousands of companies, putting workers at risk. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be entitled to a portion of these funds and receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or ever going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. Red Network.
Big series coming up this week in the AL East involving Tampa Bay and Baltimore. Right now, just a half game separating these two teams. The Baltimore Orioles looking to continue their hunt for a spot in the AL wild card race. Tampa's a favorite, though, with Kluber on the mound. Lower total here, seven and a half. Are you seeing value in this game? I, I, the interesting part about that, the handicap for me is going to come down to the left-handed batters, how they match up with these pitchers. Got burned a little bit yesterday on the Baltimore Orioles. They actually had this game 3-3, three to three, which was a perfect backdop to go to extra innings and take down a 4.5. and a half. wasn't able to get that. But I do think they match up pretty well with Corey Kluber. Over the past month here, Kluber struggled a little bit. XFIP approaching 5, not a big strikeout guy. Here's also an interesting thing. Walk percentage, Kevin. He's faced over 100 batters. It's at 1%. So the balls are getting in play because he's not a big strikeout guy, and that's usually a good thing. Now let's take a look at the righty-lefty splits here for Kluber against right-handed batters. He's done really well. A 263 weighted on base percentage with an ISO of two of excuse me, 022. So nobody really doing any damage whatsoever. But left-handed batters, Kevin, a little bit different story here. A 407 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 275. In the lineup tonight, anticipated Mullins, Rutschman, Santander, Vavra, Odor. So we're going to get probably what? At least five left-handed batters in the lineup. So let's flip it over to a Tampa Bay perspective. They really haven't hit much this year, but it seems like that's the prevailing theme on a year-to-year -year basis with Tampa Bay. You play in a pitcher's ballpark, the ball doesn't travel. You just use that quote-unquote, we get timely hitting here and lean on our pitching staff and pick up wins. But Voth is on the mound. It's not a very good pitcher. You know him from his Washington Nationals fame. Close to an X, his XFIP close to five, Kevin, over the past 30 days. But also, take a look at these splits. Right-handed pitcher towards right-handed batters, Kevin. A one 54 weighted on base percentage and a zero ISO. Sensational stuff here. But to left handed batters, a 426 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 324. Lefties do in the lineup tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays Peralta, Lau, Choi, Mejia, Walls. I mean, there's a lot of batters here from the left hand side that can do some damage. So even if you don't like this game per se, maybe a hit or prop parlay just using left handed mm -hmm. batters, you might be able to pick up some money tonight. Interesting. I'll also mention Kluber saw the Baltimore Orioles twice in the month of July. Over 11 innings, they registered 15 hits and eight earned runs, nine total runs there. Had some success against Kluber, perhaps seen a familiar face overall. That lineup can do some damage here. Yankees-Red Sox begins again at Fenway Park. This might be the most... The Red Sox ace is on the mound against maybe the worst starter in the Yankees rotation. And the Yankees are a favorite in the baseball game. So it would not surprise me if you say there is some value on Boston. But again, that speaks volumes to where this Boston Red Sox team is currently in terms of perception and power rating throughout Major League Baseball. Is the value on Boston tonight? I don't know if the value is on Boston because it's one of those haves and have-nots, Kevin. I think the perception here for the Boston Red Sox is they're not going to challenge for a playoff spot. And if you're looking at the New York Yankees, you actually have some motivation, Kevin. I was seeing some screenshots there across Twitter and social media saying percentage points now favor the Houston Astros as the number one overall seed in the AL. So maybe a bit of a motivating factor here for the Yankees to get started again. But initially looking at this game at the FanDuel Sportsbook, you see a nine and a half as a total. It sounds about right. You know, windy conditions, not really tonight. It is blowing in about five to six miles an hour. Not extremely hot, only about 71, 72 degrees showing here at first pitch. But if you look at the line, if you just say to yourself, the Yankees should be able to get the Eovaldi. I get that. But over the past month, the lineup hasn't performed all that well, Kevin, against right-handed pitching. DJ LeMay has got a 411 weighted on base percentage. Aaron Judge is Aaron Judge. He's off the charts. And Anthony Rizzo has actually had a pretty good month against right-handed pitching. But the rest of that lineup, again, it seems like we're slipping back into – that where we talked about in April and May, hey, man, you got a pretty good one, two, three punch up top, but nothing from the back end of that lineup for the Yankees. Because if we take a look, starting with Donaldson in the four hole tonight, look at these weighted on base percentages to finish out the lineup. Donaldson at 276, Benintendi at 327, Torres 258, Hicks 276, Trevino 237, Kiner Falefa 231. 325 is the Major League Baseball average. That's terrible. But if you flip it over to Boston, it's not like it's all roses on this side either. Domingo Herman hasn't been a great pitcher by any stretch, Kevin, over the past month, a high XFIP number, and he's getting torched 
by right-handed batters. But again, the same thing we just talk, talked about the Yankees. Outside of Devers with a 386 weighted on base percentage, along with Hosmer and Arroyo, everybody else has been terrible against right-handed pitching. This game should be a carbon copy, send it, print it, over. But I'm having second thoughts that they can get the 10 runs just because the batters don't seem to be as hot as where they were just a few short weeks ago. Eovaldi has really struggled at Fenway this year. He was the starter on the mound for the 28 you know, run Toronto Blue Jay game. That ERA is almost at a seven this year. And that's not the only performance where he was lit up. It's expensive. Usually you want a hitter prop parlay to be, you know, probably minus 110 or less. But DJ LeMahieu and Aaron Judge is minus 135 right now. Both good career numbers against Eovaldi. Two guys that, you know, the back end of that lineup you mentioned you don't trust as much, but maybe those two guys. You do. That's, I think, one way you could look at Yanks Red Sox. Uh, man, how about Astros Athletics? What a number you've got here. Minus 350 on Houston. Uh, Louis Garcia has got the ball against Oye, Oye, Euler. I mean, our guy, friend of the show, gets it tonight for Oakland. Man, eight and a half this total. Uh, that's a lot to ask of the Houston Astros. It is a lot to ask of the Houston Astros as a team notorious for having a lot of good bats in the lineup and saying, we don't need that many runs tonight. Let's just save it for tomorrow because we only give up two to three runs per ball game. And Aller on the mound tonight really raises because this is not Aller in a ballpark out in Oakland saying, hey, might be able to get away with it. Fly ball pitcher. Take it. This is. Some of the statistics that I'm going to bring up here for Aller are just completely against the grain of what we anticipate from a major league pitcher. You usually want to keep the ball. The better your stats usually are, Kevin, the less fly balls that you give up. Ground ball percentage is where you want, hey, 50-50, ooh, that's kind of tough here. You'd like to be a little bit better than that. How about this? 20% of the baseballs are on the ground for Aller. That means 80% are either line drives or or fly balls. That's usually a disaster. And that's why his XFIP number, Kevin, is close to seven over the past month. Strikeout percentage, 15%, not doing any damage. How about the lefty-righty split for the righty Aller on the mound tonight? To lefties, 458 weighted on base percentage, ISO power number of 346. How about the righties? 349 weighted on base percentage, ISO 300. You should get some damage tonight. But as I say that, even though you have some great batters in the lineup tonight for the Astros, they haven't been performing. We usually used to pencil in, but man, Altuve is going to do damage. He'll be on base three times tonight. How about for his right-handed pitching, Kevin, over the past month for Altuve? An 063 ISO power number through 70 at-bats, a 290 weighted on base percentage. What gives here? Yuli Gurriel, an 085 ISO at the top of that lineup with a weighted on base percentage of 265, and it feels like the Yankees. The next three batters, Alvarez, Bragman, Tucker, killing it. How about after that? Peña, Vasquez, McCormick, and Myers, all terrible. You should be able to hit Aller in Houston. But how many times have we said that with Houston, team total four and a half or five? Hey, look, another four to one win by the Houston Astros. We've seen it before, although one of the all-time great trends in the history of Major League Baseball, people are saying, is Aller yeah. versus the Astros. Seen him twice mm. this year. Dominant. A pair of wins Dominant. for the A's in those baseball games. <laughs> Certainly something to consider. Here's the deal. Uh, we're going to do Cardinals Brewers to start the next segment before we go to the full NFL uh, preseason preview because that game is worth the attention. So anything outside of that that you want to quickly sneak in here? Gonsolin's got the ball for uh, the Dodgers. Anything else catching your eye? A friend of the program, Kevin, as we like to call it, those Arizona Diamondbacks. They're in Colorado, oh. and you know what? There's a right-handed pitcher on the mound who's not that good. Not good. Bring out the bats, people. Seven-plus left-handed batters will be in the lineup tonight for Arizona. It's auto time. It's auto bet time for the uh, for the uh, Diamondbacks here tonight. I like the team total over for the Diamondbacks. In Col Nine at-bats in Colorado versus a righty. Sign me up. Yeah, are you sure? Do you know what the number is, though? I don't I care. Mean, like, that's why I don't even care. We don't care. Put it at 10. Fair enough. Get 11. Fair enough. But it is a six. An Arizona yeah, Diamondbacks team go. total is a six. Let's go. And guess what? Let's go. So is the Colorado Snakes. number. What in no. the world is that? Cardinals, Brewers, NFL preseason all still coming right here on the early line. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. 
Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers from leading financial firm J.D. Melberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity, and it's free. Call 800-273-2815. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. Call 800-273-2815. That's 800-273-2815. Call now. If you've been injured in an accident that's not your fault and you don't have an attorney, listen up. We have legal professionals standing by to tell you what your case is potentially worth. Hello, I'm Gina, along with spokesperson Rob. Rob, tell the folks at home who should be calling right now. Well, just like you said, Gina, anyone who's been injured in an accident that was not your fault, you don't have an attorney, give us a call right now, and we're going to let you know what your case is potentially worth. Thanks, Rob. So what kind of calls have we been seeing today? Well, Gina, we're getting calls from all types of accidents today. Work accidents, slip and falls, truck accidents, and most commonly, car accidents. So if you were injured in an accident that was not your fault, you don't have an attorney, take that first step, pick up that phone, and give us a call. We're going to answer your questions, and we'll let you know how much money you can get for your accident. Thanks, Rob. All right, folks at home, you heard it. Go ahead, don't hesitate, take that first step, and call now. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. I've fallen and I can't get up. Don't worry, help is on the way. With any of Life Alert's three emergency systems, help can be summoned immediately and batteries never need charging. I was having a stroke and I was scared to death. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert is a lifesaver. My husband is alive because of Life Alert. Life Alert is the lifesaver to keep me out of assisted living. Life Alert saves a life every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-609-5506. That's 1-800-609-5506. Call now, NFL preseason preview. This is a really big game. Major postseason implications. Jordan Montgomery starts with the ball in St. Louis against Eric Lauer for Milwaukee. The cards are a minus 166 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Total a seven and a half. Cardinals Brewers. What's the approach? I believe they should be a heavy favorite in this game. Now, let's take a look at some of the intricacies here when you take a look at Lauer. Not a great pitcher here, lefty. He's got a really high XFIP, Kevin, over six for the past 30 days. And that includes roughly about 100 batters that he's going up against. Low K right here, high walk percentage. So that's why those numbers are higher. But take a look at this. If you usually give me this guy's XFIP was over six, that means he's probably getting crushed by both lefty and righty batters alike. If we look at this, 14 batters he's faced from the left-hand side. Kevin, a 272 weighted on base percentage and a zero ISO power. But he's actually faced 83 batters from the right-hand side, 284 weighted on base percentage, and an ISO of 135. So something has to give to that. And the reason why I bring that up is the amount of destruction that the Cardinals have done against the left-handed pitchers over the past 30 days. It's quite impressive. Look at the middle of this lineup, and I'm just going to give you the weighted on base percentages here, Kevin, from the three hole to the seven hole. 545, 412, 453, 391, and 649. Also, the end of that lineup in the nine hole, Lars Newpar here to 394. So we're expecting St. Louis to hit Lauer. We're expecting runs eventually coming off him because his splits don't make any sense. Super high XFIP, low weighted on base percentage. I think the Cardinals get to him tonight. That's the way I would look. Not bad. I'll be looking at this Jordan Montgomery strikeout prop towards the under. 
Five and a half, minus 106 on the under. I think it's trending up instead of down, which is good for us. Let's try and get some plus money there and look for Montgomery under five and a half strikeouts. Projections are shining early. We now make the move to the NFL preseason. Big slate today on a Friday of preseason action. Excited to get involved. Picked out two specific ones, though, that are certainly the most important and none more important than Jags, Browns, the Deshaun Watson, Cleveland debut. The Browns are now favored in this football game on the road by one and a half. The total for this one is 37 and a half. I think the, the question here is less about a pick. If you have one, please bring it here. But it's what are you expecting from Deshaun Watson? This is going to be fascinating to watch throughout the day because you would think that the NFL was smart and they out of their expedited process. I guess that's like, hey, go to the post office. Can I send this overnight? Yeah, it's 150 bucks. All right, send it regular. It'll get there in three weeks. That's our expedited process. So we're looking at when this ruling is going to come down. I would actually be shocked, Kevin, if the ruling doesn't come down today before Deshaun Watson actually takes the field. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, Let's just say the ruling comes down, Kevin, from the independent arbiter and, you know, the NFL okays it and they say, okay, it's not going to be six games, right? It's not going to be eight games, it's going to be 10 games. You're still allowed to play at that point, Kevin, in the preseason. So I do think if it is 10 games, you might be looking at the Cleveland Browns as the possible play tonight because you're going to get full go from all the quarterbacks for the Cleveland Browns. We don't know how long they're going to play, but certainly Deshaun Watson will be in. But also keep in mind of this factor as well. If we get a ruling from the NFL, let's just say at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, just in time for a money line here, indefinite suspension, one year plus for Deshaun Watson. He's no longer eligible, Kevin, to play in the game tonight. So then that would lead to believe that you would say to yourself for the Cleveland Browns, well, we need more work out of Jacoby Brissett. Not necessarily the case, because then you go into a mode saying, well, Deshaun's not going to be here. I can't go out there and play Jacoby Brissett for a full half with a backup offensive line after a few series and have him get injured. Then we're really going to be up the creek at this point. So that's something that I would look for. I'm not looking to bet it right now. I need to wait to see exactly what the Deshaun Watson news is. But also, that 37 and a half on the rise here, it's a pretty high number for a preseason total. But that's anticipating we're getting a lot of starting quarterback play in this game, including Trevor Lawrence. The thing is, and, and what you're alluding to there, even if whether Watson plays or not, Brissett can't be out there all that long. Correct. It's not like there's any world where Watson can play week one. So I think you might be on to QB3 by the time we get to the second quarter for the Cleveland Browns. Because you're not going to play your starting offensive line of the, full, the entire first half of football here, right? So that is something to keep in mind. Also, Hall of Fame game, what kind of trends are we looking for? I gotcha. But the offensive side of the ball for the Jags was not great. Trevor Lawrence is not going to be is not playing this entire game. He played for some of it, but again, it's not going to be the full way. And lastly, and something we'll you know mention throughout this preseason you know preview here is be careful with the fact that overs are three and zero now in the preseason. That does not mean it's open season on totals because usually how that works. Sometimes I honestly think for the books this is a good thing. Hey, overs are three and zero. All those Twitter accounts out there should be tweeting it out. Hey, overs are going wild in the preseason. People come in the mix, and tonight's five-game slate finishes with four unders. And by Saturday, everybody is rolling their eyes and completely tired of it there. How about another game on today's board that features some really intriguing options? The Niners and the Packers. We'll start with the obvious, the San Francisco 49ers. And I'll start with this question that's not serious, but I can't help myself. Why not send Jimmy Garoppolo out there and showcase him a little bit, Donnie? <laughs> yeah. Try and put him on display and, and get a couple of callers and suitors that way. I mean, he's healthy, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but here's the reason why you don't do that. Let's play this out. Jimmy Garoppolo gets under center, five plays, 65 yards, two minutes, 45 seconds, touchdown, drive to start. Oh, boy. Quarterback controversy in the room. Did we make the right move? Should we have Trey Lance as our quarterback? Jimmy Garoppolo sees the day at this point. It's almost like it's a double-edged sword because if you put him out there, apparently for the 49ers, he's so good, he'd be so impressive that he's better than your current starting quarterback in Trey Lance, right? So it's a bad thing to put him out here. The Niners are a mess at this point, but you're right. Why not showcase it? Put him out there in the fourth quarter, Kevin. Three minutes ago in the game, mm. let it go. The headlines, right? Man, did you see that seven-yard toss that he had out there? Did you see that 14-yard deep out? 
Well, that's first round pick we're looking at right there, fellas. Let the phone lines get open here. Stop it. It's crazy, but I would love it if Jimmy Garoppolo actually played tonight. But he's not. He, he's not. And also because, again, he's sneaky, probably not healthy What does enough. he do, though? I, What's he do? He's probably like, not what, there, does, right? Does Jimmy Garoppolo have like a there. separate auxiliary locker room inside the facility where he dresses? Like, I'm actually surprised that yeah. they let him wear like the 49ers helmet and jersey. Like, if you remember Craig Hodges way back in the day in the three-point competition for the NBA, he won it the year before but came back the next year mm -hmm. without an NBA team, so he wore an NBA uniform. Like, why does he just have like the NFL PA uniform on throwing passes there at the 49ers facility? Does he get to sit in on meetings? Does he get to eat lunch with the guys? Or is he just like way over in the corner? Corner. It's pretty odd. He's out there just throwing a George Kittle. He's like, I trust Garoppolo the whole way. Yeah, no, you yeah, don't. Yeah. Uh, Trey yeah. Lance. I mean, again, like we're usually like it's preseason. Like, ah, don't pick anything yeah. apart. Let this guy get picked off tonight and watch oh, and watch. Goodness. We're gonna be doing a Saturday early line if this guy throws. Yeah. If this guy gets picked off yep. to the house or something of the nature, we we just know that's how it'll play out. It'd be one of those things like the special alert. You know, you're watching like ABC, like, hey, I'm watching a little Jeopardy here, and they break in with the special alert. You see like the sports grid programming here on a Saturday broken up by Kevin and I coming in to say, look yeah. at this. They made a mistake. We all knew it with Trey Lance. You're right. You're talking mm -hmm. about, we're not supposed to scrutinize the preseason, but I feel like unless there are points in this first drive tonight, we're going to sit back like, man, you know what? This is, is going to be a mess of a season. Where's Jimmy Garoppolo when you need him? I, I love it. I love the fact that I'm paying attention to preseason football for all the wrong reasons. It's great. Well, speaking of a mess, speaking of things that are wrong, Donnie, if I told you that there was someone to keep your eye on from the Green Bay side tonight, <sighs> right? Don't you think... That, man, hey, I'd love to go out there and see how that first-round quarterback pick is doing. Now, not from this year's class, but remember Jordan Love? Remember when that was a thing? I mean, Aaron Rodgers is, is basically signed by the time it would come typically for a team to decide whether or not they'll be extending their quarterback. Rodgers is just still going to be in Green Bay. We always talk about vengeful Aaron Rodgers. Has anybody yeah. considered that he's just going to make sure he stays in Green Bay until they have to send Jordan Love off to a new team? <laughs> like, has anybody found that to be possible here? Like, aren't these – I'm serious. Aren't these big reps for Jordan Love to flash something, whether it's to this organization or the potential next organization that he plays for here? Like, we talk about the totals. This one being 33 and a half, you're – you're, you, you have guys that have played NFL reps, right? Like the, that, the Niners, Nate Sudfeld's been out there before, right? We're hoping we get some Trey Lance. Like Jordan Love, is he not going to play like an entire half of football? Yes. What, what happens he with this play guy? He should the whole game. He should play the entire game knowing that if he gets bent like a pretzel in the third quarter because his left tackle is his six-string left tackle, it doesn't matter. Like, oh, no. Like, is anybody like, man, they lost Jordan Love for the year. And it was like, well, so? All right, hopefully he's healthy next year and Aaron Rodgers yeah. will be back. Like, it's a shame to think of it that way. But legitimately, there should be no, like, hey, Malik Willis is a brand-new guy. We don't want to get him hurt. Let's get him get in and out to get a taste. Like, Jordan Love should play all three of these games all four quarters to say, hey, I actually am in the NFL and I'm getting reps here because they're not coming anytime soon with Aaron Rodgers. Remember when Aaron Rodgers missed the game against the Kansas City Chiefs because of COVID? <sighs> Chiefs offense was giving up 30 points against anyone that stepped on the field and they could not move the football with Jordan Love. Like they went off an NFC championship appearance and added a backup quarterback infuriated Aaron Rodgers. But then again, like, I'm telling you, man, they don't like Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. I mean, they trolled him like you won't believe. That guy took all the leverage in the world, said, you better get rid of Gutenkoots. And that brother got a full contract extendo and said, I'll be here well past your days, pal. More preseason preview is next. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. 
Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now. Attention, do you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS? If so, you may qualify for the IRS Fresh Start Program, so you won't have to make any payments to the IRS. That's right, if you qualify for the IRS's Fresh Start Program, you won't make any IRS payments once you are accepted. Once you are in the IRS Fresh Start Program, they must stop all harassing and threatening collection activities. Call Tax Relief today now at 800-382-1870 to see if you qualify. Again, 800-382-1870. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-810-7576. That's 1-800-810-7576 now. Funerals can be emotionally devastating for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the high cost of arranging a funeral. Funeral Advantage was formed to help protect your family when they need it most. It pays your loved ones up to $20,000 immediately for funeral and any other expenses. It's a good feeling to know that my family will be taken care of if anything happens to me. Funerals can easily cost $9,000 or more, but government benefits pay only $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the rest. It's so easy just answer a few simple health questions. This is so affordable, even for someone like me who's on a fixed income. If you're 40 to 85, get information on how to protect your family. Funeral Advantage is something we all need. There's no risk or obligation. Call now. Get the facts about how easy it is to protect your family. Call 800-565-6178. That's 800-565-6178. Season preview continues again. It's a big Friday slate. We'll mention all these games. How about Eagles Jets? Man, I mean the birds. I mean, you got to imagine. I mean, what are they laying? A hundred here? Come on now. What do you mean? Games pick them in Philly. The disrespect. Best bet. Put on the board. We love the birds here. A couple of starters will get in the mix certainly here. Is this like a Joe Flacco line though? Is that what we're dealing with here with the with Jets Eagles, where Joe Flacco's getting a lot of juice as the backup quarterback for the Jets? Yeah, I guess it would be. Is this revenge on his hands? Because everybody knows that Joe Flacco is a South Jersey guy, and you know, anytime he comes back, there's so many fans in the stands that they drowned out the Eagles' own home fans. Here, is it Mike White? Is it Strevler? Is it Flacco? Is it Wilson? Like, what gives tonight here in this quarterback arrangement? Because I guess that's what it is. You don't usually look at a preseason and say, all right, who's the backup quarterback and how can they do it? But quite frankly, why does Joe Flacco even need a preseason anyway? He doesn't want to play during the regular season. Is he going to get sharp? Like, oh, you know what? These reps are going to really help me out. So I don't know. Maybe there's the Joe Flacco Bowl tonight with the Eagles and the Jets. Here's the the thing. Last year, they actually played week one. 31-31 was the score in that game. Now, Joe Flacco will come in, and and he'll hand the ball off to our boy, Mike White. So some Mike White juice you could certainly sell me on. What's the deal? No love for Gardner. Is Gardner Minshew is Gardner Minshew bigger than the preseason? Yeah. Right? Or what? I mean, is he is he not going to be out there for a full quarter at least? 
Here's what I need out of Minshew. After this game to be done with an Eagles victory, in the parking lot with his dad, aviators on, you know, the leather jacket, the tight jeans, the mustache, the flowing hair, the locks, him getting all fired up like he did later. Because let's remember, if there's a slayer of the Jets in the NFL, it's Gardner Minshew. And you want to talk about, I mean, there were thoughts around all on this network and in the NFL. No. They just let Minshew finish out that season. It would have turned out quite differently there with the Eagles making a run. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Not at all. Certainly nobody that takes anything serious thinks that, which, again, uh, the qualifications there, we know that Donnie does not meet. How about Lions Falcons? Why is this game at 6 o'clock? I I mean, I kind of appreciate it, but I. Like it's a, I don't know. It's just a little bizarre here. Get another pick. Here's the thing about this. They shouldn't they all be pick? I guess, but they're not. Nevertheless, Detroit's home. You got a 35 and a half. Hard knocks boost. I feel like there's going to be people betting the Detroit Lions because of hard knocks. I mean, I guess you probably should be, but also like if there's a team, we talk about the Ravens and how much they care about winning. Doesn't it feel like like Dan Campbell would lose this game to the Falcons and like not sleep the next night or next two to three nights? Like that's just the way it feels. And also, you're right about the hard knocks boost here, where the Lions are actually getting one point tonight. Where does that measure up? Does that mean like these guys know there's extra cameras in the room? They don't want to be embarrassed in this game. You don't want to have this and everybody tune in to next week's hard knocks where it was about the game with the Falcons and they got embarrassed and they're getting called out left and right. Because it seems like Dan Campbell and this coaching staff would be so extra next week on that show if they lost this game. Is that the way to bet? Like, forget about handicapping analysis. The players can't lose this game because they know how much their coaching staff will get after them on camera next week. It feels like the Lions should be a minus six and a half tonight, to be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. Uh, If the Lions were laying three and a half, I don't think I'd be an eye at it there. Yeah, yeah. Like, is there a trap? Do we have a trap line here in the preseason? Like, the ball's going to Desmond Ritter and then Felipe Franks on the Atlanta side. Ah, Detroit's going to turn the ball over to Tim Boyle and David Blau. Now, I don't ah. want to be silly enough to sing the praises of Boyle and Blau, but I don't I've know. Those them. guys got NFL reps, right? Like, Detroit's yeah, these home. These guys are Thanksgiving NFL reps today. Yeah, they've been, they've been <laughs> in big spotlight games, right? getting routed on Thanksgiving going, true. why do we put the Detroit Lions on oh. Thanksgiving? So maybe this is a turkey bowl for these guys early. I, I don't understand. Like, they don't get out of bed, though, for anything less than playing uh, against the Minnesota man, Vikings. Jared Goff. During, guy's uh, not even getting pushed, man. Mm-hmm. This guy's not even getting pushed. Like, who the, like Jared no. Goff was, let's send him to Detroit because he'll be an afterthought, and then eventually he goes and goes, hold on, man. Look at this depth chart here. I can actually stick around. Boyle and Plow, B&B out there. Come on. Yeah. Like, he wasn't Airbnb. even nice. talked to or about or from in the entire first episode of Hard no. Knocks there. They're like, look, man, we've seen enough of this guy. We've seen enough of this guy. Year three, not going to happen. We, 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 we're, no. we're good here on Jared Goff. I think the plays of the Lions, though. I'm not mad at it there. Minus yes. 110 on the money line. Uh, I think it would make a little more sense. Uh, we've got Cardinals. Um, we've got Cardinals Bengals. 31 and a half is the total. Now, Joe Burrow and his appendectomy, we know he's not playing. What kind of clause do they have in Kyler Murray's contract, though, as it pertains to the preseason? Like, does he have to show up to the field? Does he travel with the team? Does he have to watch this game film, Donnie, as soon as it's over? Like, what are the uh, appropriate clauses for Kyler Murray? Can he bring his Nintendo Switch like on the sideline tonight to get some extra games in at this point? Because it looks like all hand or off with Kyler Murray could do whatever he wants. But these are the tough games, too, because you look at this and you say, like, as we go down the list, usually we could talk about like one or two preseason games. Oh. But you can see it like reaching down like we're Eagles fans here. What do you think about the Eagles game tonight? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a game. All right, next game up on the like this is basically what we're giving. You hey man, 63% of the agree. time this team covers when their starting quarterback doesn't play. None of that applies to this year. So, right, we're looking at Joe Burrow is not playing. Drew Plitt will play. Jake Browning of Washington fame is going to be in there. I, I don't know. Like, that's the best advice I can give you tonight on this game. I don't know. I <laughs> I can't believe. Sometimes I don't think you're real, man. I really don't. 
Like an ability. Like there are certain. I'm not. I'm gonna leave it alone. Look, the the one no. thing I'll say though uh, is if you're going to get involved when you hear the names that are mentioned again, I think it can be an underslate. It's just the way things work out. Thirty one and a half there. Yes, it's very very low, but. Are you relying on Trace McSorley for your juice? Probably not. The big game this week on the weekend preseason slate, I, I, I mean that honestly, by the way, is Steelers-Seahawks. Quarterback, bat, like if you genuinely can watch Pittsburgh Seahawks yeah. probably start to finish with a level of intrigue. The Steelers are going to be able to give you Mitchell Trubisky on to Mason mm-hmm. Rudolph and then on yep. to Kenny Pickett which very well could yep. last the entirety of the game. The Seattle Seahawks, though, is where I want to start with this because we just made the point on Brissett and Watson. You can't leave Brissett out there too long because that's going to be your starting quarterback. How long do you think Geno's going to start? How long is Drew Locke going to be allowed to play? Do you think the second half is going to be all Jacob Eason, one quarter for Geno, one quarter yeah. for Drew Locke? I think it sets up that way. I really do. Maybe even a little bit less for those two quarterbacks and more of, let's just say, Jacob Eason at this point. But it is the one game that does have intrigue because as we joke around the other games, like who's actually coming in? There are guys fighting for jobs. And anytime you have that, that means you owe it to the players, talking about the coaching staffs, Kevin, to put them in the best possible position. Now, you're going to run plays that you're going to use in week four to try to surprise the defense? Absolutely not. But you're going to give them equal opportunity. You're not going to say, Geno Smith, you're starting. Uh, you're going to get two series. We're going to throw a pass on every down. And then, but I want to see how Drew Locke integrates the running game in. That's not going to happen here. And it'll be unfair to the players. The same thing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mitchell Trubisky is going to get that start. And then behind him is going to come in Rudolph. And you're going to see, obviously, the young kid, Kenny Pickett. But they're going to do the same thing. You're not going to say, well, I let this guy shine. He threw, you know, 11 passes. And then Mason Rudolph came in the game and threw three passes. That's not going to happen. So usually when you see that where there's jobs on the line, you get a more crisp game plan from the actual offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators mm-hmm. for coming out in this game. So if I'm looking for a total, usually it's all unders, I would go over in this because I just think you're going to get honest performances and honest play calls and also jobs on the line. There's nobody coming in this game going, well, what? hey, I'm just going to have some fun out here because I know I'm not going to take a single snap this year. Some of these guys could get 17 weeks, Kevin, out of good performances in the preseason. The interesting thing, so for Seattle, because I think it's just going to be Geno to Drew Locke, and then Jacob Beeson comes in, right? And that kind of stops everything mm-hmm. for them. For the Steelers, it's Trubisky's job to lose. He's trying to lose it, but he's supposed to lose it to yeah. Mason Ru- Rudolph. That's all a joke. I want to see what happens with Kenny Pickett and how long he's out there. Because even if I believe that Kenny Pickett is more of a – option to be this team's starting quarterback than most. I understand that. But this is the offensive rookie of the year favorite currently and dropping down to 6-1 to one on the FanDuel Sportsbook. You know, if Kenny Pickett looks bad, then we're going to have to start to make some adjustments here. Because if Pickett is not the week one starter, I do not know how he remains this favorite to win the to offensive rookie of the year. Because let me ask you this. Trubisky's terrible first four weeks. They're one and three. They got to bench him. Do they go to Pickett or Mason Rudolph? Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. I yeah, totally agree. I believe that. So yeah. Kenny Pickett is going to play at most, what, six, seven games here? That's why I this can be surprised by his favorite status. Right. Remember Trey Lance last year? The guy wasn't even playing, had no chance of playing, but all of a sudden his mm-hmm. odds were decreasing every single week. We're like, what is he going to play three games this year and be offensive rookie mm-hmm. of the year? That might be what you're looking at. But from a just like a Steelers organization, as I would like to say, they like to win games this week. They're not worried about next week or how things look. And you're right. Mason Rudolph will be getting that second look here if it doesn't work out with Mitchell Trubisky. So that is why, again, I think the picket stuff is is so necessary. Because if he does by chance steal this job from these two guys, I think they're more willing to have Pickett jump Rudolph than a Trubisky. But if he's able to take it from the two of them, then he's not just your offensive rookie of the year favorite. It's going to be with a huge, huge gap. But if he it really starts this year third on the depth chart, you should be looking more towards a guy from six to one to twenty to one. I think when we talk about 
that market. You look at the rest of his slate here. I know you've been, you know, going through it quite a bit with an intense eye, looking for intrigue and, and good potential spots. I'll tell you where I'm really interested, though. It's Chiefs Bears because mm. I think we're supposed to get like a quarter of football out of Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. They're at least going mm. to play. That was a little surprise. Tom Brady's on vacation. Aaron Rodgers, I think, is doing a pseudo campaign to get the preseason banned. Matthew Stafford yeah. couldn't play even if he wanted to. And we've got Pat Mahomes reps here, week number one of the preseason. Yeah, no, it, and also let's always hasten the call because we've seen Andy Reid in Philadelphia for many years. Donovan McNabb is going to play the first half of this football game in week three of the preseason. Donovan McNabb goes six plays, 65 yards in a touchdown drive. I've seen enough. Hold on, Big Red. He's got five more trips out to the field in the first half. No, he doesn't. He's going to the bench. Don't take anything Andy Reid says like with the truth serum is what you need out of him because if Mahomes has a scoring drive, including a field goal, he's probably out of there to start. I actually got some juice here. Miami Dolphins, Tampa Bay Buccaneers now with Tom Brady missing. So maybe some of these backup quarterbacks get extended playing time and want to show their wear 31 and a half in that game. I think that one goes over. All right, not bad. A nice look there. Also, yeah. Washington and Carolina. Carson Wentz's first reps with the Commanders and Baker Mayfield's first reps with the Carolina Panthers. Big time total there for preseason, of course. Heavy 37 favorite. and a half. Really interested to see. To be honest, laying three is huge, right? Who's the who's yeah. the big favorite of the week? Anyone got a four? A couple three and a halves out there. No fours. Yeah, what's the though? Ravens next Baby week? Are they going to like five? Yeah. Eight? Yeah, they need to be laying like a hundred. All right. Now, listen up. Donnie closes it out. You heard a screech outside at night, but you can't see what it is because there's not enough light. You need the Bionic Floodlight from Bell & Howell. This solar-powered, motion-activated, multi-directional floodlight. The versatile, wireless, safety, security, and outdoor lifestyle light you'll love. And right now, it's yours for just $29.99. And the shipping is free. Order now, and we'll send a second Bionic Floodlight. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-604-7066 or order online at bionicfloodlight.com. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or been diagnosed with another asbestos-related cancer, call now. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be able to receive compensation without ever going to court or filing a lawsuit. Thousands of hardworking men and women have been diagnosed with mesothelioma because manufacturers put profits ahead of safety. Manufacturers knew the risks of asbestos exposure for years, but knowingly manufactured and sold deadly asbestos-containing materials, putting millions of American workers at risk. These manufacturers have tried to avoid compensating their victims, but the courts have ordered them to set aside an estimated $30 billion in trust money for the victims of asbestos. Call now to see if you're entitled to a portion of the $30 billion. You could receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. From 1953 to 1987, veterans and civilians were potentially exposed to toxic chemicals in the drinking water at Camp Lejeune. Exposure to these chemicals increases the risk for cancer and other health problems. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with a serious illness after being exposed to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-327-4629. That's 1-800-327-4629. Have you ever felt leg pain, restlessness, cramps, tingling, swelling, numbness, itchiness, or coldness? Then you need the new clinically proven Legsercise Pro, the natural circulation booster that uses continuous automatic leg movement to soothe pain and promote healthy circulation the natural drug-free way. After using Legsercise for a week, I felt like I wanted to go for a walk again without pain like I used to. Legsercise Pro's patented walking simulator propulsion technology moves your feet back and forth along its concave track, creating constant movement and flex at both the knee and ankle joints. 
It's like having a physical therapist right in your own home. It's helped with the swelling and the pain. The tingling feeling is gone. Call right now and order your very own Legsercise Pro, the clinically proven automatic leg mover that soothes pain and naturally promotes healthy circulation. Call now. Of them with some of their own. Final segment of the day and the week here for the early line right here on the Sports Grid Network, Sirius XM Channel 159. Donnie Wright's out here with Kevin Walsh, as always, powering you up for the weekend from 7 to 9 a.m. before we hand it over to the morning after and Ben Stevens and the rest of your Sports Grid programming for the day. Exciting day. It's a football Friday here at the networks. Got my Eagles shirt on. Why? Eagles, Jets tonight. Whoa! Live from South Philadelphia. Talked about a Major League Baseball card. A lot of playoff implications. But the big story of the day, I still cannot get over. That's Tom Brady taking a vacation in the preseason. Listen up. I wish I had an hour here to talk about this on Listen Up because I can't believe that a star quarterback, maybe the single best football player to ever lace them up, is taking the laces off in the middle of training camp, building camaraderie, sweating with your teammates, getting ready for a 2022 championship run. And I need a few weeks off at this time when you were just off for six full months. Something there has to be more than meets the eye with Tom Brady leaving camp for approximately two weeks saying, you know what? Let me go handle some things and I'll meet you guys to come back. And where does this leave the future of the National Football League? Because guys that are very good at their job, a la Tom Brady and maybe some other quarterbacks, do they build this in? Hey, coach, I'll show up the first week. Then I'm going to Aruba week two. I'll come back in week three of the preseason. And then right before the season starts, I'm going to squeeze in a trip to Sandals in Jamaica for me and my wife before the season starts. Enough with the madness and the nonsense. There has to be more than meets the eye, as I said, of what we're reading into Tom Brady. But it is rather interesting. Can you imagine if Tom Brady comes back after these 10, 14 days or however long he's out and actually has a very good season? Who's to say that next year he won't plan this midseason? How about October or November? Nice little two-week retreat here down to a Caribbean island. Sounds good to me, but it certainly is an interesting topic for debate. What's not up for debate? Staying right here with the grid. It's a football Friday. Ben Stevens in the morning after. Coming up now. Now. 